Alright, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for my ban list prediction. So, uh, with your guys' help and with a lot of thinking and processing and trying to at least get this remotely right, uh, I do have my ban list prediction here for you guys. So, uh, I tried to keep it unbiased and, uh, you know, as practical as possible. I tried to get into Konami's head, at least as, as close as I can to get into Konami's head. Because sometimes they be throwing them curveballs that you don't even expect. I mean, who the hell predicted Regeki getting unbanned? Anybody? No? Alright. So, uh, this time I'm going to go ahead and try to predict as best as possible what I think Konami will do. Or movements that Konami may think about doing or consider doing for this badness. So, uh, generally, these videos are really long-winded. I'm a very long-winded talker. I like to go into detail about everything that I decided to do. And uh, if this video ends up being super long, then I apologize. But I hope that you guys will just uh, sit back, relax, listen to what I have to say. All right. So, uh, let's just get it started. So, start it off. Banned. Nothing. I, I do not think that anything is worthy of getting uh, the ban hammer. Uh, there's nothing that in this game that's so powerful that it deserves to be banned. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, because you can really see the card right there, well, what about Vanity Zemptus? Because I know there's a couple people that are like, Vanity Zemptus should be banned. Uh, you know, I personally, I wouldn't care if Konami bans Vanity Zemptus. I don't care. But I think that Konami's probably going to put the card down to one. And the reason why I think that Vanity Zemptus is going to go down to one instead of being banned is because I'm trying to go set presidents and put it into a boat. Um, it's a floodgate card, obviously. What are also other Floodgate cards that are also at 1, which is, of course, Defisher, Macro, and Soul Dream, where they, yes, they are unhealthy for the game, and therefore at 1, where, yes, you get 1, then you may have the, you know, a better situation depending on what deck you're going against, what deck you're using. But, you know, there's still lower consistency. I feel like Vanity's Emptiness is just another uh, egg in that carton of just Floodgate cards, so... And, um, also, another thing that I think the reason why Vanny Septimus should be at 1 and not banned is because it's supposed to be like a reprint balanced version of Royal Oppression. Of course, Royal Oppression being banned. You know, you can, whenever you're special summon monsters, pay 800 and then blah. So, pretty much, it's similar to that. So, it's kind of being like, hey, it's balanced because neither player can, can special summon. So, you know, that's fair. Neither player can special summon. And then, of course, whenever a card is sent from your field or in your deck and just sent to ground, this card's destroyed. So, you know, in Konami's eyes, they're probably like, oh, well, that's fair. But, you know, and, and, you know Konami is clearly watching, um, you know, the meta. They can clearly see that uh, Van Zeptinus is very, very unhealthy for the game. You know, in my opinion, Van Zeptinus should have been hit last list. But, you know, of course, with their uh, reprint and, uh, uh, you know, Legendary Collection 5Ds. I hope they uh, made their money. I, hope, I mean, it was the card that you saw after besides the Globe Ball. There's that card that you wanted to get. So I'm hoping that Konami uh, made their money. They, they're like, all right, we made our money. Now we can go ahead and hit it. Because you did the same freaking thing with Six Cents, Konami. The same damn thing. Where Six Cents was the card, they made the money, and then they hit it. So I'm hoping that you do the exact same thing with Vanity's Emptiness. I hope that uh, that's your decision. So uh, I say Vanity's Emptiness 2-1. All right, next, um, uh, Artifact Engine. I don't care if it's Morale Talk. I don't care if it's Sanctum, but one of these two needs to be hit. Like, I'm really surprised that Konami didn't hit this last list. You know, if you guys know, of course, you guys should know, we are, you know, TCG Konami, hello. And we're very, very conservative. Conservative being, instead of, you know, you know, bringing older decks up to par with the newer decks by giving them cards and you know hey like hey you just have this card hit well you can have this back and you can have this back we're like no everybody's going down to where we want them to be so you know it's very shocking that you know konami didn't hit the artifact engine at all you know and the ocg they hit morale tap to one but here like nothing last previous as i was flabbergasted because the artifact engine not only was the beginning of the format hat but then it was even still fairly relevant with shadals you know it was even play with shadals it's easy you know moral attack is an easy easy light choice but uh you know it's very beneficial that konami needs to hit this artifact engine because this artifact engine is only gonna get more powerful uh, it kind of faded out with the you know the uprising of shadals and the uprising and burning this because destruction wasn't as good but with you wanting to promote Kleeput. Kleeput, hate destruction like that, you know? That's the last thing that Kleeput wants is for, you know, you, you know, for them to go ahead and slap a scout down and you just go Sanctum, summon Moral Talk Pop, you know? Artifacts are old news. They're not relevant. We can start stepping away from, you know, the Artifact Engine, you know? Even the card is still expensive to this day, and, you know, 
I thought maybe Konami was going to do something with artifacts, like maybe like reprint them or do something with them, but they did nothing with them. They literally just skipped by it, and I was completely shocked. You know, that was one of the things that I was definitely flabbergasted about. You know, when Vennies didn't get hit, I was like, all right, well, they're doing something with Vennies. But, you know, when they didn't hit artifacts or anything related to artifacts or the artifact engine, I'm just like, what? Like, why? Like, I don't understand, Konami. Like, what, 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 what are you trying to do here? So... You know, definitely, definitely, um, you know, something in the Artifact Engine, you know, uh, you know, probably Muraltak. Probably Muraltak is the correct choice, you know. Um, Sanctum, still, just, you know, but Muraltak, that's, that special summoning in that pop, that, that's what's hurting. That's what's going to definitely hurt Cleplate, so, you know, if Muraltak is at 1 and Sanctum is at 3, even 3 Ignition, no, no one's going to play the deck even with, uh, you know, um, Three, I mean, even with three Sanctum and three Ignition with only one Moral Attack, but if you hit Sanctum to one, then still you still have three Moral Attack and three Ignition, so you could probably still do something with that, so Moral Attack is the correct hit, so I guess we should just go ahead and put Moral Attack. Alright, uh, next, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, to tell, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, for those of you who are, you know, just coming on to this video just to see and then listen to my balance version, I am not a big fan of the whole free my nigga Stratos hype. I'm once again going off of uh, logical. Like I said, if Stratos doesn't get on ban, I don't give two shits. I'm not really a big fan of heroes, so, you know, I don't really care if he gets on ban or not. But this is the time. Like, if there's any time that Stratos would be unbanned, this is it. Like, it's pretty much this ban list or bust. Because, of course, the hero structure deck is coming out early in 2015, I'm, it's either January or February, I can't remember, but it's one of those two months, so early. So, what way to hype up your new product, your new structure deck, by bringing back a card that's been sitting on the ban list for a cool minute now, sitting in the ban section for a cool minute. And we have set precedents. This is not the first time that Konami has moved cards on the ban list just to, you know, hype up their new product. I mean, all you have to do is just look at Legendary Collection 5B, where Gale went up to two, all the Black Queen stuff got reprinted, where Gold Bulb got unbanned glow bulb got reprinted you see what Konami's doing here so you know don't be surprised if uh stratos gets unbanned like i said but it's either this list or bust you know do heroes do the mass heroes need stratos no they don't you know they're probably the most consistent deck in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. like you know triple rota triple e-call triple hero lift triple uh shadow mist you know um if we do get uh blaze man triple blaze man like the deck is super consistent triple pod duality uh you know you know, and triple reckless to triple upstarts, and you throw the Stratus in there, like, you're just getting everything all the damn time. So, does the deck need Stratus? No. But will unbanning Stratus, you know, bring some more um, hype to the structure deck? Of course. So, uh, it really depends on what Konami wants to do. But, you know, like I said, it's either this list or bus with, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to Stratus. Alright, next card. Uh, Scale Drain. Scale Drain, uh, it's an indirect hit. Like I said, Cleaput or, of course, the Money Child of uh, the... You know, that's the, that's the deck that they want to promote. That's the deck they want to make money off of. But it doesn't mean that they won't indirectly hit the deck. For example, Shadows. They had an indirect hit with Super Poly where do Shadows being relevant and bringing to light how powerful Super Poly is, they indirectly hit Shadows by hitting Super Poly, a card that, you know, is un generally unhealthy for the game and deserved to hit. Same thing with Cleplay. Cleplay, of course, are a deck that can run Skill Drain and run it to a very strong potential, you know. Why not bring to light the fact that Skill Drain is unhealthy for a game and once again another floodgate-ish card, you know. I definitely feel that, you know, Macro, D Fissure, Soul Drain, Skill Drain, and Vanities, you know, all at one, that's totally fine, you know. But these 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 floodgates, you know, are sitting at three, you know, I just don't understand what's going through Konami's mind by having Macro and Soul Drain and D Fissure at one, but Vanities and Skill Drain at three. It just doesn't make any sense. And of course, you know, Skill Drain has always been that card that, you know, should have never been at 3, you know, despite what the format is, it's always been an unhealthy card for the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! But, uh, you know, it, there's never really been a deck to bring it to light, and, you know, I think, like, the last deck that even really used Skill Drain was uh, uh, Yang Zings, and they were kind of like, eh, you know, and Dark Rolls, they were kind of, eh, too, so, you know, there hasn't been a deck as powerful as, uh, as Kleeput to really bring it to light, like, I mean, not even Dragon Rulers, and they even, when they played, not even Dragon Rulers could even really show Konami, like, hey, this card should be a hit. But, uh, you know, hopefully Klee put, uh, you know, Konami will be like, you know what, this card is generally unhealthy. Let's go ahead and hit it indirectly, just like what we did to Super Poly. So, uh, lots of set precedents here. Alright, so, uh, moving on. Um, Sinister Shadow Games. I 
personally think that uh, OCG's hit to uh, Shinra's Shadow Games was a uh, was a smart one. Um, hit by hitting Shinra's Shadow Games down to one, I, it definitely uh, hurts the consistency of Shadows, and uh, it's definitely one of the key cards in Shadows. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, and you know, if you ever play Shadows, you know that this effect to be able to, to uh, send a Shadow and flip up is just so powerful. It's just like two great effects in one. And uh, when OCG hit it to one, I think that was the correct choice. Now, can I definitely say 100% that that's what uh, we're going to do here in TCG? No, uh, no. Uh, sometimes we have set precedents. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we follow OCG. Sometimes generally we don't. So um, it's a great choice. I definitely think it's a great choice. I know that, you know, TCG Konami look, is looking at OCG and seeing what they're doing, of course. And they saw that, you know, Search of Shadow Games did go down one and the rest of us saw that. And I think that would be a totally correct hit, you know. Uh, you know, it hurts the decks consistently a little bit, but it doesn't absolutely murder the deck, you know. The deck is still getting a little bit of support, you know, they're getting Wendingo, who's complete blight, and then um, they're getting the Water One, which I'm guessing the Water One, um, if I could guess anything, I have a feeling that he's going to be able to attack every single special summon monster, like, uh, summon him, like, oh, your special summon monster attack, oh, special summon monster attack, 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 I, I kind of feel like that's what the Water One is going to do, but... You know, I'm, I'm not working for Konami, so hey, if that ends up being its actual effect, they don't look at me, but, um, you know, so, they, they, but they're slowly stepping away from Shadows. Shadows are slowly stepping away. So, I feel like this list right here is going to be like the, hey, uh, you know, uh, push the Shadows, like, kind of nudge them to the edge of the cliff, but then leave them alone, and then the next list, you know, if they're continuing to topping and then the deck's not relevant anymore, just, Konami's just going to shove them off, and they're just going to fall and just, you know, break their necks and die, so... Um, I think that uh, hitting Sh Sinister Shadow again to 1, I think that's a totally fine and justifiable uh, choice to go ahead and put down to 1. Alright, so uh, next card, um, Fire Lake. Uh, Fire Lake is uh, another one of those super unhealthy loopy loopy doopy cards. So, um, if you guys do not know, you know, Burning Abyss, like seriously, Fire Lake loop so real, so real. Um, and, uh, you know, I kind of feel like it's unhealthy, it, you know, it's very, pretty much their most powerful play that they have, um, pretty much the reason, this card right here is the main reason why they are the number one deck in the format, and not Kleeput, because this de this card literally just shuts down Kleeput easily, and it's recyclable uh, through Dante, so of course, uh, if you guys don't know, um, oh, let me see, let me, let me see the Burning Abyss, because I get their names mixed up, so, uh, Burning Abyss, Burning Abyss, uh, I need you you two. Alright. So which one's the one that summons from the deck and which one summons from the graveyard? Alright. So grass summons from the deck. Yeah. Alright. So, of course, um, all you need to do is have one tour guide and one fire lake. You just go tour guide, summon graph, XC and Dante, detach the graph, mill whatever, graph will summon um, sir, set the fire lake. No, your opponent, go ahead, flip with that fire lake, hit him for up to three. Up to three. It doesn't have to be up three. Up to three. Um, Sir will summon back to Dante, and uh, Dante will grab back the Fire Lake, then your turn, go ahead and summon Burning Best, set the Fire Lake, and rinse and repeat. So, definitely, 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 uh, Fire Lake is very unhealthy, and, you know, just increasing the consistency of being able to get off that looping play is what's really unhealthy. I mean, I I feel like by hitting Fire Lake, lowering its consistency down to one, you know, if you get it, you get it. But, you know, at three, when you can run triple copies of this, and, you know, open up with it and loop the hell out of your opponent, and especially loop and hurt Kleeput, the deck that they want to promote the most, yeah, no, that, that's kind of frowned upon, so I could definitely see, despite this card, uh, you know, just being released in a set, they pretty much made their, all their money off of this set in the next Challengers, uh, you know, there's a couple more bucks, but no, Fire Lake isn't the money card, that's not what they want, you know, to, that's not what everybody's hunting for, you know, if you're, if you're buying a, a box of next Challengers or new Challengers to pull a damn Fire Lake, then no, <laughs> you know, that's not what you're looking for. So, uh, you know, it's totally, it'd be totally fine if uh, Konami go ahead, would go ahead and hit uh, Fire Lake down to one, and just to lower the consistency of this looping play. All right, so uh, next card, uh, still to one, um, not to semi-limits yet, is uh, Dante. Now, Dante, he, he, he's kind of touching himself, he's kind of touching everything. He is the cornerstone of this deck. And you can tell that... Um, they kind of messed up with Dante, but then kind of tried to revise it with Virgil, just by the way that the card was read. So, of course, uh, right here, the first sentence, you can only control one Virgil uh, on a field. You can only control one Virgil. 
but they didn't have that stipulation on Dante, and that, of course, has been leading to a lot of multiple Dantes on the field, doing multiple things, having multiple effects in the background, grabbing multiple monsters back, grabbing multiple Burning Abyss cards back, and, uh, you know, Dante is just the cornerstone of the deck, you know? It doesn't even matter how powerful Virgil is, because Dante is still, I mean, look, Virgil, new, the card in the new set, not as expensive as Dante. Dante is the cornerstone of the deck, and, uh, you know, I kind of feel like by putting Dante down to one, um, you know, everybody would get one. You can still, you know, summon multiple Dantes, but at least you can't go Dante, put back the Dante, to get the Dante, to put back the Dante, the Dante, the Dante, the Dante, touch the Dante, Dante touching himself all night and day. So, by putting it into one, um, you know, it would just uh, kind of hinder the deck's plays a little bit, uh, kind of step away from Burning Abyss, and I think that uh, putting Dante to one would be a totally fun hit. So, um, you know, I was kind of debating on, like, if we put Dante to one, uh, could we leave Fire Lake? And I'd still say, I still feel like both of them should be at one. Because uh, even, you only need one Dante to do the Fire Lake combo. So even with Dante at one, it'd still be, you know, unhealthy for Fire Lake to be at three. So I think that uh, both of them at one, um, I think that for now, that would be a fine Burning Abyss hit. Um, um, you know, I hear a lot of people saying, like, Skarm to one, or Tour Guide to one. I don't, I don't think that this is the list to kill Burning Abyss. I think that's next list. For this list, uh, just lower the deck's consistency and see, um, you know, test the waters. Like, hit the deck, see where it stands. See, like, is this enough for the deck to be okay? If not, we can always hit it again next list. That's generally how Konami thinks. So, I kind of feel that, uh, you know, by hitting the Dante and um, and the Fiery Lake, uh, kind of just stepping away from the deck's uh, plays a little bit. So, you can't just keep looping it. I kind of feel like by hitting any of the Burning Abyss monsters, that would just completely wreck the deck. The deck already has uh, trouble with, uh, you know, monster count anyway when it comes to uh, monsters. They only have, what, uh, what, three monsters? And then, what, they run, like, some decks run multiple versions of uh, copies of Rubrica. Rubrics not bring anything new to the table. So uh, it's pretty much just you three, so... Uh, that's really all you got, so definitely, definitely, if you were to hit um, any of the monsters, that would just kind of shut the deck down, so, uh, you know, maybe they can go ahead and address that in an a upcoming list, but for right now, I just think that, you know, Fire Lake to 1, uh, Virgin 1, and maybe Tour Guide to 2, it would be enough. Oh, Mathematician to 2. Uh, just a little deck consistency. But, uh, yeah, I'll get to those. I'll get to those. Alright, next card, um, I have Construct to 1. I, I... Once again, I, I think that uh, TCG Konami is looking at OCGs, and I definitely feel like by putting Construct in one, it would definitely change the shit all plays. Um, it wouldn't kill the deck. It would just, you know, force them to play differently. Uh, with the whole Winter hit, um, I wouldn't mind that. You know, I, I definitely don't feel like... Winter's strong, but I don't feel like Winter is, like, you know, the end-all, be-all of the shit all deck. I definitely think that uh, Construct is the Peacekeeper. Because, think about it. If you summon a monster that's, you know... Stronger than 22, even stronger than 26, so not even, you know, uh, fusing into Shiki Naga Commandle, then what, of course, what's your opponent, what's your opponent gonna do? Uh, if you summon an extra deck monster that's stronger than, you know, let's say 3,000, for example, so that summons a monster that's 3,000, then what's your opponent gonna do? Of course, they're gonna shoot off fuse and summon a construct. They're gonna summon construct, get a construct, summon a construct, 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 construct. You know, you can clearly see should all decks, you know, sometimes they only run like maybe like one to two, uh, you know, uh, windows, but you know they're damn sure they're gonna run three construct. They're gonna loot construct. They're gonna keep getting construct because construct is the best. The Twenty-eight meter, who uh, it's kind of like a catastrophe for all special summon monsters. You know, construct is the the peacekeeper of the deck. So I kind of feel like by hitting constructor one, you know, you only get one. So you know, if you summon a summon extra deck monster and your opponent, you know, uh, summons construct and gets it, and then you summon some and you get rid of construct and summon something else. You know, that's pretty much it. Your opponent's going to have to rely on different plays, but, you know, not simply just, you know, summoning multiple constructs over and over and over and over again. So, I kind of feel like construct 2-1 um, would be a uh, fine choice. Uh, like I said, I can't really put my finger on it, whether it comes to construct or Sinister Out Games, because I'm not sure if TCG Konami wants to follow OCG, but I feel like those would be totally fun hits, and I can actually see it. Alright, so uh, that's all my limited cards. That's all I have for limited so, uh, moving on to uh, semi limited, uh, Hero Lives. Uh, like I said, we're freeing your niggas' shadows, but I feel like it should come with a cost. I know a lot of ton of people, I'm seeing people, a ton of people's balance predictions are just like, Stratos unbanned. And then what? You know, just Stratos unbanned. Alright, so a Stratos, three Hero Lives, and, and, uh, and three E calls, and three Rotas, and three, uh, you know, everything. Then wouldn't we be back past, even past the point where Stratos got banned? Because Stratos got banned for. 
Hero Lives and High Consistency and OTK and no. So wouldn't that just put us right back into the sinkhole that we are, were in previously? It doesn't make any sense. So I kind of felt like if we're going to ban unban straps, I kind of felt like we should have some repercussions um, and, you know, try to balance out the fact that, hey, Stratus is back. So um, I feel like a great way to go ahead and balance the f out Stratus coming back would be to hit the cards and adjust the same way that OCG adjusts. Just go set precedence off of OCG. And OCG, Hero Lives, and Bubble Man are both at two. And it seems to be working fine. They have the hero structure act, and it seems to be working fine. Especially Hero Lives. Like, a Hero Lives is so good. Like, if you're going to Hero Lives for Stratos, man, you should think about Hero Living for Shadow Mist. Hero, hero Lives is so good. Like, forget Rhoda, forget Ecall, forget everything. Hero Lives. I will gladly pay half my life points to Special Summon Shadow Mist. Search for that max change, set that max change. During your turn, flip up that max change, turn my, uh, my uh, Shadow Mist into a Dark Wall, and search. Like, no. Hero Lives. Uh, definitely, you know, you know, and once again with this whole, oh, but you're paying four thousand life points. It just doesn't say pay half. It doesn't say pay four thousand life points. It's pay half your life points. You can always pay half. You know, there's a reason why uh, you know solemn judgments banned because you can always pay half. You know, whether you're winning, whether you're losing. You know, this is this card is like when you control no face on monsters, but you know, it doesn't matter if you're winning or you're losing or anything. You can always play the hero lives, and that will of course extend your hero plays. So, I kind of feel like, you know, just by putting a Hero Lives down to two, uh, that might uh, go ahead and uh, address uh, Stratos coming back. Now, of course, in the OCG, they only have one Rota. They have Triple E Call, but only one Rota with uh, Triple Shadow Mist. But they also have uh, Blaze Man. So, that might, you know, even out the play. So, we have Triple Rota, but they have Blaze Man. So, but um, I definitely feel like by putting a Hero Lives down to one and Bubble Man down to one, going off a of set precedence off the OCG, I think that would be a totally. A justifiable move to do if you're bringing Stratos back. That way we can kind of, you know, balance it out before Stratos just comes out here and just goes hog wild crazy and literally would just be the exact, doing the exact same thing that he was doing when he got banned, you know. So at least let's go ahead and learn on our mistakes and be like, all right, well, you know, we banned Stratos and then we brought Heroes Lives and we bought E Call and we bought this back up and bought this back up. So, uh, you know, I definitely feel like, um, by just go ahead and putting a, a hero lives and a, a bubbly down to a two, we should be okay. Now, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, well, "What about malicious?" Uh, malicious is fine, you know. And if you're if you're worried about the whole malicious plague spreader play, then you're not even relevant to anything. That's not even that's not even what's relevant. So that's not even a thing. Uh, and of course, just as easy you can summon Stratos and search for Mali, you can just as easily you know send. Uh, Shadow Mist to the graveyard and search for Mali as well, so it's the exact same thing. So I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about you know the Bubble Man and the OTKs and then the Hero Lives to you know the OTKs in high consistency. I think so. I think those two going down to just like the OCG would be a justifiable move to bring Shadows back. All right, next at uh, two Tour Guide. Now I've seen a lot of people say Tour Guide to one, but I think that would probably kill Burning Abyss. They they need their Tour Guide. They need Tour Guide. You know, so I think like I said. I, I, this isn't the list to kill Burning Vest. This definitely is not the list to go ahead and uh, kill Burning Vest. I think that uh, by just slowly stepping away from the deck, lowering the deck's consistency, and then and then seeing how it is. And if it's too powerful, then we can adjust the next list. If it's just right, you know, it's, you know, test test the porridge. Test the porridge. You know, right now the porridge is too cold. So you know, we don't want to turn up the porridge too hot because then you burn your tongue. We don't need that. We want the porridge to be just right. Let's try just right, and then, you know. And if our, we we think that this 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 is just right, and it's too hot, then we can cool it down. We can address it in the next list. So, um, you know, tour guide back down to two. Uh, set precedence. Um, generally, Konami likes to hit cards that have already been on the list, or like to move cards back on the list that have previously been on the list. You know, like for example, look at Heroic Seal Complication. It was like three to two to three to two. So, you know, why can't tour guide throw three to two to three to two? So. I definitely feel like Tour Guide uh, going back to semi it would be uh, a fun choice, though, the because uh, this is here burning, but just a little bit, just a tiny bit. You know, they just can't go Tour Guide, Summon Scarm, oh, Scarm, Search Tour Guide, Tour Guide, Summon Scarm, oh, Search Tour Guide, Tour Guide, Summon, you know, like that. So just lower the deck's consistency, just a little bit. All right, uh, moving on, once again, another uh, consistency card, Mathematician to 2. Uh, Mathematician is a very powerful card. Uh, in the OCG, they hit Shadals by putting Armageddon Knight to 1. But then Mathematician is still at 3. And I'm sorry. I don't care. Mathematician is way more powerful than Armageddon Knight. Like, immensely power more powerful. Like, 
you know, his synergies with the threes, uh, his additional draw, his ability to send any level one through four. Like, Armageddon Knight can only send darts. You know, Mathematician. Mathematician can send for Burning the Base. Mathematician can send for Shadows. Mathematician can send up Lobo. Mathematician is so good. Like, I kind of feel like by putting Mathematician to once again, stepping away, you know, if we have to put him down to one in, you know, the next list, we can. But I think let's go ahead and try him at two. Uh, Mathematician, seriously, uh, it's, it's not the first time that Konami would hit a card that is beneficial to both decks. For example, in uh, March 2013, Sangan got banned because the top decks were Windubs and Dino Rabbit. And what's a card that both decks had in common in use was, of course, uh, Sangan. This was also the list that Tour Guide went down to two because what's a card that both Rabbit and, uh, and uh, Windubs both used? Tour Guide. So, once again, Mathematician is pretty much in that same boat. Uh, it's used in Burning Abyss, and it's used in Shadals. So, uh, I think by putting uh, Mathematician down to 2, we can kind of lower the consistency of both decks, kind of step away from it, the other way to play because uh, Mathematician is so powerful. You've got Mathematician, send a Skarm, search a Tour Guide during the effect. Mathematician, send a Squad Mod, a Squad Meta, send a Beast, or send, uh, you know, a Falcon, or send whatever, uh, Shadal related. Uh, mathematician, send a Globe Ball, Beast related. Mathematician, send Felice, Felice, summon back one card, Black Rose, like... Mathematician is just so ridiculous, and and then his his uh, destroy by battle draw extra card is just the cherry on top. Just to you know, just to make sure that you don't neg when he's destroyed by battle. Just go ahead and even out. Like no, no, no. And he's stronger than Armageddon Knight too. So you know, I kind of think that uh, OCG kind of went down the wrong path by hitting um, Armageddon Knight, but they were just getting the uh, what what was that set called? I can't remember what that damn set was called. With the fucking soul charge and shit like that. I can't remember. Wow. It's been such a long time. With the hands and shit. And Mathematician. Uh, they were just getting those cards. So I kind of felt like Konami was like. Oh, OCG so was like. Oh well. Can't hit Mathematician. You know like. He's barely out. He hasn't even came out yet. Or done anything. So we'll go ahead and hit Arm again. Knight to lower the consistency of Shadows. So like I said. If they want to put Mathematician down to one. More power to you. But I think two. Let's let's try two. Let's try two. Alright. So uh, next. Uh, Shadow Fusion. I, you know. I'm seeing a lot of people say. Um. Shadal Fusion down to one. I think that's a little extreme. Once again, I kind of felt like just lowering the deck's consistency nudging it a bit. Uh, kind of felt like three Shadal Fusions are a little bit too much. So I think maybe by putting it down to two, lowering the card's consistency, getting the card uh, a little bit less should be fine. I mean, you'll still have your triple um, your triple Hedgehog. Uh, but, you know, we can go ahead and put it down to two. If it's still too much, put it down to one. But, um, you know, um, Shadals are slowly stepping back. Stepping back, you know, they're still there. They're still top and they're still, you know, they're still on YCSs and stuff, but, you know, they're slowly stepping back. So, uh, just lower the consistency of the, you know, um, you know, that top deck should all fusion, you know, because it'll be at three. Um, you know, you'll still have two should all fusions, your three hedgehogs, hogs, um, your three, um, L should all fusion, and then, of course, your equip should all fusion. So, you'll totally be fine, but it's literally should all fusion that's literally the problem. Like, it literally, it's literally punishing you for using what you're using and very, very just unhealthy for the game so you know if they want to put it to one i wouldn't care but i kind of felt like maybe two is okay probably being a little bit too lenient on this but you know i'm trying to get in the konami's mind and i'm kind of feel like they're going to be a little bit lenient on this you know they still want to promote uh Chanel's and i kind of feel like by putting fusion down to one that would kind of just you know totally repulse the deck from any players that want to um play this deck so i think two will be fine and then if they want to go ahead and put it down to one next list then they can go ahead and do that Alright, so those are all the cards that I have at Summer Limited, so let's go ahead and move on to Unlimited. So Unlimited, I have uh, Glow Bulb. Uh, they unbanned Glow Bulb, and I feel like Glow Bulb is going to have the Spore Syndrome. So as you can clearly read in the last sentence of Glow Bulb, you can only use the effect of Glow Bulb once per duel. So there's really no reason for Glow Bulb to be at 1 or 2 when you can only use the effect on once per duel. So I think that's going to be set persons just like Spore. Spore is banned, 1, 3. So I think that Glow Bulb is going to do the exact same thing. Like... You know, it doesn't matter if Glow Bulb is at 3 or if Glow Bulb is at 1 because you only wear it as effect and its effect can only be where it used once per duel. You know, if you want to run multiple Glow Bulbs to increase your consistency and your uh, junk double deck, and you know, then hey, more power to you. But, you know, I, I definitely think that Glow Bulb can go ahead and go to 3. It's not going to change anything. Alright, next to 3, uh, Transmigration. Uh, Transmigration has been at 1 for forever and, you know, it's been at one forever because it kind of loops itself so pretty much you transmigration put a transmigration and then draw a transmigration and you, you can pretty much never deck out but uh clearly we put transmigration the prophecy up to two this list and 
it did nothing. I mean, it might have been a you know a couple of side tech cards, but you know nothing along the lines of the means to keep it at sign limited. This card can go up your head and go up to three. Like, if we're not worried about the loop at two, then we don't need to be worried about the loop at three. And like I said, if you're if you're running Kaiser Regression Prophecy because you're worried your opponent's gonna deck you out, then once again you're playing the wrong game of Yu-Gi-Oh here because that's not that's not even relevant anymore. So, uh, trying regression can go up to three. Uh, Gail. Gale can go ahead and go up to three. Uh, Gale going up to three isn't going to help make Blackwings any more relevant than they are. The deck still has consistency issues, and you know, um, I kind of I know the economy kind of put it up to two um, with uh, you know the whole legendary collection five Ds. You know, oh, look, oh look, Blackwings again. Look, it's all reprinted. It's all there for you. But you no, know, if they want to keep it at two, I don't care. But I I say Gale can go up to three. Yeah. You know. You know, generally we try to Konami tries to you know kind of push cards off the list, make room for other cards. So you know, I kind of feel like Gale would just be un yeah you know just dead weight there on, on the semi limited list. So we can go ahead and uh, push Gale off, and we can put other cards that deserve to be you know semi limited like Tour Ride and stuff. So uh, you know, Gale can go ahead and go up the three. It's not going to make Black Wings prevalent anymore. And uh, Gorse Gorse can go up the three as well. Uh, Tragodia is a much stronger card than Gorse. Tragodia can be um, dropped when you take damage, so you can have cards on the field. You can have Tragodia with some back row. Uh, you know, uh, depending on how many cards you have in your hand, Tragodia is stronger. Tragodia's effects are better. You know, being able to go ahead and snatch one of your opponent's monsters, uh, you know, permanently just by you know discarding a monster with the same level and copying level in the graveyard. So e easy XC plays like Tragodia is way stronger than Gorse. So kind of feel like Trag should stay up too, but Gorse, you know. If you gotta have you gotta have no cards on the field. If you want to leave yourself open just to summon a Gorse, hey, more power to you. But uh, you know, well, Gorse was forever at one, and, and Gorse was at limited in a much slower paced game. You know, in this fast paced, high octane meta game of Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, there's really no place for Gorse. Gorse is a little bit too slow. You know, and if you're leaving yourself open like that just to summon a Gorse, then you might not be doing it right, so you know, Gorse can go ahead and go up to three. That's not even anything to even worry about. Like, you know, uh, I believe OCG has three Gorse, so all right. You no, know, if, if if Konami is ballsy enough to put him to two, then you can be ballsy enough to just take him off. All right, and the last card to um, go up to three is of course Dark Shack Fighter. So of course. Uh, Dark Shack Fighter did get printed in Legendary Collection 5Ds. I I was keeping my out for it. I'm like. You know, if he's in there, then he can possibly get unbanned, you know. And he, hold me hold, he is in there with his errata. So, um, you know, there's really no reason for him to remain banned, especially since he got, you know, in there. He's only a common, though, so you can literally pick him up for 50 cents. And, you know, in my opinion, Dr. Claire is not as strong as he used to be, you know. Uh, you know, besides uh, Black Rose, I just kind of feel like there are other um, Seven Secrets that are much stronger than Dr. Fighter. For example, Yazi. Yazi is so powerful, so, you know, I'd much rather go into Yazi than a Dr. Shack Fighter any day, you know. Especially since Dark Shack Fighter really, it's just not as powerful, you know. Uh, you can only use the effect only once per turn, and you have to use it during your main phase one. So, you know, it's not like you can go like, Alright, Dark Shark Fighter, attack you directly, and then main phase two, Dark Shark Fighter, shoot it yourself, and burn for, uh, you know, additional 1400, there goes half your life points. No, you can't do that. So, um, I kind of feel like um, Dark Shark Fighter, he's, he got his Rada, he's fine. Uh, you can just go ahead and go up to three. It, it, it's not going to change anything. So, uh, yeah. All right, there we go. So there's my ban list prediction. So going over it again, uh, uh, ban nothing to one vanities, morale talk, stratos, skill drain, sinister shadowed game, fire lake, Dante construct to two, here lives bubble man, tour guide, mathematician, and uh, should fusion and to three global bulb transmigration prophecy, Gale, Gores, and Dark Strike Fighter. Alright, so uh, tell me what you guys think about my ban list prediction in the comment section below. Tell me if I missed anything, or what you guys think of it, or go ahead and just go ahead and comment your ban list prediction in the comment section below as well. So, uh, once again, I apologize for these long videos. I like to go into detail and uh, make sure that I get every single little bit of detail and the reason why I think that Konami would do these things, or why they won't do these things. So. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed, and I'm totally looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys think, and uh, you know, just waiting for the ban list along with you guys and seeing if uh, how many of these uh, uh, predictions I get correct. All right, thanks for watching.